three kiwis a day actually will build, help your DNA build itself back up so that damaged DNA will be repaired. We also know that intermittent fasting helps to repair your DNA and it even slows down cellular aging. Some amazing research has been done uh, looking at which foods can help protect our DNA. And, and some of them are, are very ordinary, like a kiwi fruit that you might eat at breakfast. You know, that brown fuzzy ball, you cut it open, it's got this emerald green uh, interior with a little white starburst. You know, it's kind of tart and sweet at the same time. Well, that kiwi is packed with vitamins and antioxidants. And it's been shown that eating just one kiwi a day can actually uh, protect your, cause your blood to be fortified, to neutralize about 60% of the incoming damage from DNA. And if you eat three kiwis a day, okay, which is pretty easy, right? I mean, you peel it, you cut it up, you put it into a yogurt, okay? It's something that's simple, actually will build, help your DNA build itself back up so that damaged DNA will be repaired. So don't, don't forget, like, think about the way of protecting your DNA. I remember an old video game called Missile Command. And this is where, from the top of the screen, there are all these missiles that are descending down on your planet. And what you had to do is to be able to you know, you know, fire and, and try to neutralize all the missiles. And that's what antioxidants actually do. But it's really hard to prevent all the missiles from coming in. And so occasionally you actually have one that, create, that gets through the shields and creates a crater. That's damage. And so neutralizing the incoming is like antioxidants, but building back the damaged DNA. Well, that's important too because that's like patching a pothole in the highway, in the roadside, so that you, so other cars don't have a problem on it. And and so here's a, an example of a food, a kiwi, that can actually do that. But there are other foods that can also have varying degrees of protection of your DNA as well. Fasting is another topic that's captured the public attention. And people think of sort of fasting as extremes. I think that the, we tend to think when foods in terms of extremes. Here's the science. We know that um, the body needs a certain number of calories just to function in its ordinary state. And we know that if you go on a, if you're lost in the desert or um, and you don't have any food, you're not going to be eating. You're going to starve to death. And at some point, your body's going to run out of energy and your systems are going to collapse and you'll just shrivel up in a desert uh, and, and, and be dead. Now, we also know that if you pound yourself and you overload yourself with calories, uh, you're going to be uh, unhealthy, uh, metabolically unhealthy. You know, you can develop diabetes, you can develop all these other chronic diseases, the chronic inflammatory state, and you're going to gain weight. And when you gain weight, you add the, the fat tissue actually is also more inflammatory. So these are the extremes you want to avoid. You don't want to die in a desert uh, star, and nor do you want to actually balloon up and become uh, deadly unhealthy, as I call it. All right. Having spelled out those bookends, let's talk about what the science tells us. Science tells us that if we restrict our calories, okay, that's called fasting. Periods that, don't, that we don't eat. By the way, we well, we all fast. When you're sleeping, you're fasting. That's why they call the morning meal break fast. Breakfast is because we're actually breaking our evening fast. So fasting is something we do. It doesn't have to be extreme. But we do know that when we actually restrict our calories, wonderful things happen to our health defense systems. It all comes back to our health defenses. It turns out it um, helps your body by, by restricting uh, calories, intermittent fasting. Um, our body's defenses and angiogenesis help to starve cancer. It kind of helps our body cut off the blood supply to cancers. Um, we know that when you actually um, intermittently fast, you call out more stem cells. Your stem cells kind of reboot and then the fresh ones come out. So it's kind of like, um, trying to think like changing the battery yeah. in, in a flashlight. You get refreshed. We know when you intermittently fast, it also reboots your gut microbiome. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it kind of takes away some of the bad neighbors and some fresh neighbors, better neighbors, they reorganize the neighborhood. We also know that intermittent fasting helps to repair your DNA and it even slows down cellular aging at the level of the cap on the end of your DNA, the telomeres that burn down normally during aging, intermittent fasting slows that aging process down at the cellular level. And inflammation, and intermittent fasting, by the way, helps us develop a more fortified immune system because part of the reboot at the stem cell level is to make new immune cells. So we've got fresh super soldiers produced coming right out of the oven 
uh, for to help uh, our immune system. So these are ways that intermittent fasting has been shown to help our defenses. Doesn't mean that you have to do it all the time. It means that this is another technique we can use to kind of up our game uh, periodically when it comes to our health. You don't have to be a robot yeah. to do in, in, do intermittent fasting. Skipping a handful, uh, skipping, skipping a few meals a week actually is helpful for your body. There's a lot of work about longevity of like, how do we slow down the aging process? Some people want to reverse the aging process. What I would tell you is that one of the tri triggers is our DNA um, needs to be able to protect itself better against the environment because our environment ages us. So what am I talking about? We all know somebody who spent, you know, their adolescence and young adult life lying out uh, in, on the beach. And then when they're in their 40s, man, they are, they're, they're like leather, right? And they, they look like their skin's pretty rough. That's aged skin, sun aging of skin, okay? Now, that's what we see in the extreme. But I can tell you the same thing is happening when you're stuck in traffic in Los Angeles on the I-10 and on a sunny day and the sun is coming in on the windshield or your or your arms out the window, you're still getting that damage. So how come we don't turn into leather every single time we get stuck in traffic or walk or go out for a run? It's because our DNA knows how to fix itself and reverse that damage that's occurring. We got our DNA actually um, uh, experiences a problem about 10,000 times a day. And if we didn't fix ourselves, we'd be aging a lot faster uh, uh, than, than we already do. And so one of the tricks to slowing down aging is to help our support our DNA's ability to fix itself from the environment. And so this is the ability for DNA to, to block the incoming missiles from the environment, uh, ultraviolet radiation from the sky, radon from the ground, off-gassing from your carpet, from your you know, that new car smell, all fumes coming in, smelling that gasoline at the pump, which is now rising in cost, right? Because everything's going on in the world. All that stuff actually damages our DNA. Thank goodness our health defenses, our DNA is one of our health defenses, can fix itself to prevent that problem. 